This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And today we have great news about real estate. All you guys out there who um, think you're the next Donald Trump or some tycoon, this is your show. Real estate's in a bubble. Stock market's in a bubble. Bond market's in a bubble. So I just caution you on that because um, as some of you have heard me before, the best time to buy is after the crash, right? I mean, that's yeah, that's right. So just be careful right now. So take what we say right now, just realize we're at the top of a bubble right now. We are at war with Russia and we got a moron running our country. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it doesn't mean you still can't get rich though. So I am here on the show with my, one of my best friends, Ken McElroy, been 25 years, been fast. Yeah. We have made fricking millions together and we pay very little in tax. And um, so I'm gonna tell you how we met is, when I came out with Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right, we created the cash flow board game. And some people, well, how do you sell this board game? Well, I think I'll write a book. So I wrote a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And naturally, the publishers in New York said, you don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean your house is not an asset? What do you mean savers are losers? What do you mean the rich don't work for money? And it just violated everything that these academic types are taught. And the reason is because they went to school. They're A students. And capitalists don't really need that stuff. So anyway, I'm catching hell all this, and then I meet Ken McElroy, and he goes, hey, I like what you're saying. Yep. Right? So yeah. what happened? Well, well, how'd that happen? Well, I, I gotta tell you, you know, um, like millions of other people, Robert, um, I loved your book. I, I it, it was exactly the message that I hadn't read anywhere, and and it was true. And and so um, I was lucky that I got to meet you after after reading it. And and I, I, I you know it's it was what I was doing, but I, there was no book about what I was doing. I just knew that cash flowing real estate using bank debt and all those kinds of things um, worked. Yeah, because everybody was saying get out of debt, live debt free, and all that. And for most people, that's really good advice. If you have no financial education, live debt free. And all this, but the biggest mistake that people make is they call their house an asset. And if you understood a financial statement, which is rich dad, poor dad, assets put money in your pocket, whether you work or not, and liabilities take money from your pocket. So the average person, even if they have a PhD from Harvard, they're buying liabilities they call assets, like a 401k. Is it an asset or liability? No, oh, it's a liability because the money's going out of your pocket. That's right. I just don't touch that stuff. So it's because Wall Street and the Federal Reserve Bank and all those guys are telling you what to do, that you think your liabilities are assets. Oh, my, my, my father, poor dad, he always said, yes, son, that house is in our name and it's my asset. And my rich dad was, uh, your father may be a PhD, but he's an idiot, you know? <laughs> and so when Kenny comes walking up to you one day, he says, I like your book. I'm going, thank God. But there was another reason Kenny liked the book is because the key to real estate is management, property management. And what were you doing at the time? Well, that's part of why I loved your book is I was managing property for other people. So I had a, I was an on-site manager. I was collecting rents and, and paying the bills. And, and then if there wasn't enough money, the owners would get mad. If there was more, I would pay it to them and then we'd be happy. And it was really that simple. That's how property management is. If, if you return cash flow to them, they leave you alone. If you don't, they don't leave you alone. So, so in the property management world, I was living the, the, the principles in the rich dad, poor dad book. I literally was managing for people that had, you were using debt. They were using other people's money for the equity. They were buying real estate. They were putting, cause I would meet all the partners. They would come through the buildings and I would meet them all. And they were just normal doctors and CPAs and lawyers. And, 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 and uh, I was like, how, this is wild how all this works. And then you start to put the pieces together. Cause I was in the business long enough. And, and um, the principles in Rich Dad, Poor Dad were true. And that's why I enjoyed the book so much. But the funny 
the hardest part of real estate is finding a property manager. Because if yeah. you can't find a property manager, you're it, yeah. right? Yeah, that, well, and I didn't know that until later. You know, I was I, I started managing properties in college, you know, for free rent, basically. And then you, you, you learn pretty fast, like who pays rent, who doesn't pay rent, you, you, you know, and the problems that can come from renting something too quickly and not doing credit checks and all those little things that all add up to no cash flow. And so that's what gets most new real estate investors in trouble is they don't know how to manage the property. And there's a lot of legal stuff to it, is Well, yeah, so so here's what I see, The big, one of the biggest mistakes is people look at it like a stock or a stock market or just, you know, they invest their money and then they walk away. Like all of a sudden, magically, these great tenants are going to show up and, and, you know, you're going to be, you know, getting three bids for the landscaping and the painting and the cleaning and all the things and the utilities and looking at all the bills and all that stuff. They just think that just happens. <laughs> That's what property management is. Or they say, um, Kemp's father would say he was a stock guy, you know, like, and stock guys are different than real estate guys. They're very, very different. Yeah. Very, very different. He says, I don't want to fix toilets. And I said, what makes you think I fix toilets? Yeah. But they can't get past that. So it's property management that's the key. So Kenny and I started with Kim. Kim was managing our properties and boy, it's, it is really a bear. It's hard. And then, uh, so Kim was begging Kenny, please manage our properties, please manage our properties. And Kenny said the magic words, I can't help you. <laughs> what did you say to Kim? Yeah, you guys are thinking too small. And she, it was like a bullet going through her brain. <laughs> she yeah. says, what do you mean I'm thinking too small? What did you mean by that? Well, you were buying small units, like 10 and 12 unit Something buildings. Something we could manage. Yeah, yeah. And, and you were doing it for that reason, and you, you know, because you could drive over there and put a tenant in there, look at a unit. and, and But the truth is, um, if you have a manager managing a, a 10 unit building. It's too expensive. Yeah, it, you also have a manager managing a 200-unit building. Uh, so the the difference between a, a manager that's going to accept a 10-unit building and a 200-unit building is experience and wisdom and somebody that really understands the business. And so when you start buying bigger properties, what happens is you attract better people that and they make more money and you pay them more money. And, and all of a sudden, life becomes a lot easier um, the bigger the the properties are, and that's what I meant when I said it. And so, so Ken prevails. He, he says, "Okay, I'll take over." And he walked onto some of our properties, the biggest thieves for our property managers. <laughs> and I, I wish I hadn't seen that before, but I have. I, I mean, we, you know, at this point, I had managed, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand units, uh, you know, up and down the West Coast. So I knew I'd seen a lot of things, and and this. So when you as somebody who's done that for a while, when you step onto a property, you can see the signs. Yeah. You know, like I remember one unit, I, wa I opened the door and it's filled from floor to ceiling with appliances and electronics and, and you know, leaf blowers and and lawn equipment. And, this is our property, right? Yeah, now. oh yeah, this is, your one, this is one of your vacants. Um, and uh, it's full of stuff from like Ace Hardware and Home Depot and Lowe's and, and, and I'm like, okay, this guy's stealing. And that was our it. Our property manager's son was stealing yep. from us using our credit card yep. to put stuff in storage from Ace Hardware and he was fencing it. Yep. So those are things that I've seen before. Oddly enough, I've seen your manager steal money. Uh, I, you know, I've seen all kinds of things as you are, just like anything, no matter what profession you're in, if you're in it a while, you start to see things from clients and customers and vendors. And, and so, you know, so it was super easy for me to, within 10 minutes, I was like, okay, you got a problem here. We're going to have to extract your management team here, put new people in. And that's what Kim got. She's like, no, remember? Cause the, 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 the gal you had managing the property was very nice, but she had to know because there was a vacant unit full of stuff and she was just covering for her son. So she was very, very, very nice. Um, try not to get her son in trouble, but he ended up getting in trouble. Yep. And then we've, we've had our property manager one, one night, one of the tenants called us and says, Hey, your property manager's a truck in front of his house and he's moving your refrigerator out. Yeah. <laughs> our property manager, we, had, we gave him a big house on, on our property 
And one of the tenants calls, he says, the guy is moving furniture out of your house, the refrigerator at night. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. I've seen tenants do it. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things that happen in the property management world that don't get discussed a lot, but you know, the signs are there and they're pretty consistent. And, um, and so within, honestly, you guys made a really good decision on the property itself and the location, but so it was literally a month before we had that thing turn around and re-rented in full. It was not that far off. So, so Kenny, um, took pity on Kim and myself <laughs> and we still have those properties. And he sent his best team in there to clean the whole rat's nest. We had several small, like 18 units and 25 units. And he cleaned out the rat's nest. Yeah. yeah and just, the rat's nest were the property managers. And some of the people they had in there too. So, you know, that's the other piece, you know, I've had everything, man. I've had, drug dealers, we've had prostitution, we've had, we've had, you know, we have a lot of crime uh, at properties before that we've taken over. And, 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 you know, so I've seen a lot. And, and once you, you know, miraculously, once you put somebody in there that's pays rent and works, like your life gets a lot easier. So <laughs> it's really not that difficult, but it's common sense. So one more warning, we're at the top of a market right now and Kenny and Kim and I were buying at the bottom of a market. And that's why it kind of made sense. Be careful. And you just don't go and buy, like I won't mention his name, but he's very famous in the real estate world. And he says, go out there, start with a 200 unit apartment house. And I went, are you kidding me? I think it's what, 15, $20 million, 200 unit apartment house. That's how you start. And, and you know, Sarah knows I got into it with him right on this Rich Dad radio show. I mean, would you start with 200 units at 20 million bucks? No, no, no. You, you, you know, you got to start with um, small deals, make small mistakes, just like you would do anything. So I remember that show. Oh, I remember that show. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk to him anymore. N no. I mean, I don't think he'd answer my call even if I tried. <laughs> So we at the Rich Dad Radio program here will do our best to make sure that we are upfront with what we say. So again, it's a top of a market, top of the bond market, top of the stock market. Baby boomers are retiring. So be very, very careful. And you just don't go out, so I'll become Donald Trump and I'll buy a hotel. You just don't do that stuff. So when we come back, we're talking more about Ken and his latest book. It's called The ABCs of Raising Capital. Because one of the beauties of real estate is that, as it says right here, only lazy people use their own money. So if you're listening to this program and say, well, I could get into real estate, but you know, I don't have any money and you, you effing rich guys have money and all this stuff, we didn't have money either. So this, this only lazy people use their own money comes one of our teachers, Frank Crary. He was teacher for Kim, Kenny, and myself. And he would laugh at us. He was in his 90s and he'd say, only lazy people use their own money. Yep. And so the book that Kenny is coming out with now is his fourth in the series, The ABCs of Raising Capital. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Inflation is at a 40-year high. The Fed is tightening up and top firms predict returns under 5% for the next decade. No wonder a recent JP Morgan report declared alternative assets are no longer optional. And of all the platforms for alternative investing, there's one that's a no-brainer. It's called Masterworks. Masterworks has solidified itself as the platform for investing in contemporary art. You can access exclusive investments from names like Banksy and Picasso for just a fraction of what billionaires pay to diversify their portfolios. Since 2020, Masterworks has sold three paintings, with each returning over 30% net IRR to investors. And their new offerings usually sell out in hours. 30%? That's pretty wild. If you want to get in early, go to masterworks.io, create an account, check out what they have, and invest in their offerings. And our subscribers get to skip their wait list at the special link in the description below. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Our guest today is Ken McElroy. And he, and after Kim and I made millions and millions and millions of dollars of them tax-free, and we still own our real estate, we don't sell, we don't flip, we, we're buy and manage forever type real estate people. Kenny wrote three books for us in the Rich Dad series. So what are the first three books? 
So yeah, the first one was the ABCs of real estate investing, and that nice. that that was a basic book, and and that obviously was a bestseller and, and did really 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 well. So I start did, start with that book. Yeah, okay. yeah. Then the next one is a little more advanced. So that's something putting more complex stuff together, syndications. You know, talking about IRRs or you know, and and, and those kinds of things. You know, how you refinance, you pull out money tax free. Yes. You see, guys like Dave Ramsey said, "Live debt free, not us. We want debt." And that's one of the beauties of real estate. Yeah. So it goes into more detail about how to use debt. And that so kind that's of stuff. book two. Yeah. And then the third one, of course, which we talk a lot about and we talked about in the first sec, the sec segment was the property management piece, the ABCs of property management. And because you know, I've seen lots and lots and lots of investors, especially in the property management world, they buy something and then they hand it over or they try to manage it themselves and they run it right into the ground. That's the, and, but those are the biggest investment they opportunities. Are, those are the greatest deals to yeah. buy. When you find an amateur like us running them, that's when Kenny steps in. Yeah. But anyway, so your last, your latest book, the fourth book is the ABCs of raising capital. All the lazy people use their own <laughs> yeah. money. I knew you'd like that one. But you've got to read the first three books first, right? So what yeah. does this book cover here? So essentially at this point, you, you know, I, I think that if you're getting angry and, and hearing, you know, uh, you know, I need to save my own money, uh, that that's an excuse. You know, I hear it all the time. I have so much equity. I have this. I have, you know, I don't have enough money to invest. That's literally an excuse. That's like um, I'm fat and, and I'm not going to go to the gym. You know, it's it's that it's in that same category. And, and the truth is, is the people who raise capital um, know that this is uh, the way it's done. And, and so if you think your, your financial planner raises your capital, <laughs> they make fees off of you. The entire industry is set up this way. It's set up to attract capital, to invest into things, and you can do this too. And so this book is a step-by-step -step, um, book on exactly what to look for and how to do it and, and the questions to ask. So what are some of the points you cover in the ABCs of raising capital? Well, the first thing, of course, that we always talk about is finding a deal. You know, once, you know, if, if you can find a deal and this has nothing to do with raising capital, it, if you can find a deal and you can get the bank to finance it and you can get investors to invest in it and it produces cash flow, then you can just replicate the rinse and repeat. That's it. And when I started years and ago, this was 74, my real estate agent, my real estate teacher says you have to look at a hundred properties. Yeah. And I looked at a hundred properties because he might find one. And I, and I had to write a report on 100 properties. This was my assignment from that class in 74. And all of a sudden as I'm writing this report up, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly of these, each of the deals, I said, oh my God, there it is. So my first deal was $18,000 on the island of Maui. And everybody said, well, you can't afford Maui. But there was Maui, $18,000, nothing down. That's right. And I made 25 bucks a month. That was an infinite return because I made 25 bucks on nothing. And by the way, that w what you did do is use, you used the bank financing. So, so it was other people's money. And, and that is the point. But I had to look for the deal. Right. Now the question is, Kenny, how many deals do you look at before you find one? A lot. I mean, that's the thing. You, you know, and what happens is if, if, you're, if you're investing, let's say, stock, I could buy a stock right now on this show literally from my app on my phone. And, and so that is super lazy, you know, hope, I hope it goes up. What's hard is looking for deals and finding equity and debt for those deals. That's what's hard and being able to see them so that you can educate investors. And so that's what we do now. Right, and so that's why your first three books are essential, the ABCs of finding real estate, yeah. the ABCs of financing real estate, the ABCs of property management, because yeah. that allows you to see, and then you can raise the capital. But a lot of people are lazy, you know? They are lazy, and this is, you know, this. I, I knew you'd love this quote, because most people believe that they have to have the capital raise or they need to have, you know, come from a rich family. And, and those are literally excuses. Right. And, and it's just not true. What I've found uh, the biggest issue that we all have right now. And most of the people that we associate with are deals, deal flow. And tonight, you know, like, uh, you know, my 32nd in Camelback that, uh, yep. apartment, it's a, it's a old age, it's an old age uh, home going up. You know how I made my money on that one? How? Uh, our friend Sal 
got it rezoned from three stories to four. Yeah, change of use. That's called a change of use. That's in Holy the book. mackerel, we yeah. made so much money. It's shocking. But then the property in front of it, where Tarbell's and Tomaso's is, is the night I'm meeting with Mark Tarbell, and we want to take a run at that corner. But yeah. that's how you find a deal. Well, the thing is, guys, is you drive around and you see, let's say, three office buildings on a corner and the fourth one has a home. You could pretty much assume that the height, you know, uh, in that area is already zoned for, you know, something bigger. So that home is all of a sudden very expensive. And that's what you're talking about. Right, right. And, and as you start to see these things, you can raise capital for them. Right. But it took me with that $18,000 unit when 1974, looking at 100 deals, analyzing 100 deals, I had to write 100 papers up. Yep. And suddenly I could see it. Yep. It's repetition. It's like anything. You, you, you are not going to get the wisdom unless you go out and start looking at deals, start getting emails, start looking at stuff, start getting on the phone, start walking units, start going to neighborhoods, you know, and start calling people. It's just not going to happen. And the most amazing thing we, you know, we, we have a video that we've done. Are you, what do you, what would you call it? What we just did Sarah with the video? Oh, uh, with Kenny and I just in, in the, oh, like a promo or a short video. Yeah, with, and so you can, how will they find that video? That'll be on their platform, RDA, Rich Dad Advisors. Okay, so they can go, you can see that on Yeah, I'll put, a link to, I'll put a link in the description. Yeah, so just, just look at that, but it takes a while to get that good, do you know? And, but it's worth it because I talk about it. <clears throat> Kenny's problem right now is finding deals because guys like me have so much money coming in from the last deal you gave us. I have to give it back to Kenny. I said, Kenny, I can't take this money. And he's all, so well, his capital raising gets easy because there's so many guys like me, well, you've made so much money for, I'm trying to give it back to you, right? Never in my life would I have believed that I would have more money chasing me than deal flow. And in the beginning, <laughs> I was, it was, I thought I needed money. You were chasing money. guys like me before. Yeah, I was. And, and that's how you start. And, and then what happens is as you start to return money, like to you, I just gave you a couple million bucks last week, uh, ca tax-free, cash out refi. And as you start to do that, and by the way, to hundreds of investors, you know, we're always refinancing projects and, and, and returning capital to them because that's why they invest with us or our team or our leadership. And, and when you start to do that, then the confidence and the trust goes up as it should. And as you start to perform to the business plan that you told them you were going to do, um, you know, and, and so it takes a while. And after 20 years, you, you have now, um, you know, a, comp, a, a following. And, and so, so now we do have more money than we have deals. And so our issue is deal flow. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm just somebody that started managing a 60 unit property in college and, and learned this from, from zero. So uh, anyone can do this. Well, it takes, does, it takes a lot of practice here. The point here is this, that's why we, I love property, but I don't like the management part about it. So that's where Kenny started. And I'll say it again, if you can't manage property, don't go into this business. It's a bear. I mean, it is a bear because that's a business then. Yeah, it's like anything. You guys go into restaurants, some are managed well, even the same franchise. Some are, some are clean, some are not. Some are friendly, some are not. Same thing with property management. Tenants are good, they're not good. You know, the management's good, they're not good. So it's the same. So one of the things here is that what goes from Frank Crary, was our, one of Ken is my teacher, only lazy people use their own money. And Frank was teaching me how to find gold mines. Yeah. So Frank sent me all over the world looking for gold mines. <laughs> I remember. Of all things, you know, and I, I, we love that guy. Don't we? Oh, he's the best. He and was it, the best. He had such wisdom. And, and you, you know, I, I, whenever I can get around somebody that's been investing for 50, 60 years, and, you know, you should say nothing. You should just talk uh, or listen and ask them questions by talking and just ask questions and ask questions and try to get as much, glean as much as you can from them because that's what I did with Frank. Um, Frank would come over to our house and we'd sit there and just ask him questions. Yeah, because he's done it. He's done, oh my gosh, so much. But my point here is this, is that, so finally I put my deal together with Frank. It was a gold mine in China, the biggest gold mine China ever found. I raised $27 million on a Toronto stock exchange. We found gold. I was a billionaire for about a year. 
and we had so much gold. And the Chinese government said, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. They took it from me. And I really understood country risk. But that's how you learn. You know, I go, holy miracle. They just, not that I hate the Chinese people, but I don't like the Chinese communists. They just took my gold mine. So it looks like we didn't make any money, but the whole story completes last week too. So Kenny calls me up, he says, I got $2 million. I go, Jesus, what am I gonna do with this money? I mean, it, the problem is you gotta keep moving that money. And so my friend calls me from Vancouver. He says, guess what? I have a gold mine and it's in Utah. So, the, so Sarah knows, right? I just moved that two million right into that gold mine. And then Kenny's part of the deal and all this, it never makes it outside. Please hear me when you see, that, you know, the, from the cash flow corner, ESB in the eye, the best deals never get outside. Am I correct? Yeah. Well, in fact, we say the, the bigger the brochure, the worse the deal. <laughs> if somebody has to sell you with this big brochure and all this information in there, the it's probably, there's probably some salesmanship uh, in that. And, and we would, we would do uh, literally uh, over the back of a napkin, over a beer or something. Do, do, yeah, do, do, do. like here, here's the high level, here's what it is, here's what it'll do, in, right? And the reason if we say that is because when you, if you're watching television and all these guys are pumping this stock deal or this mutual fund and all that, run. Because the more promoted it is, it's probably the worst. Would you, would you say that's true? Yeah, I, I really would. You, you know, it's the, the it's, it really is a game of, of um, being inside of, of, of a bunch of team and, and an industry and, and understanding deal flow. Even last week, um, I was in the middle of nowhere. I was in Perup, Nevada, you know, doing some tactical training, and there were real estate guys there. And we were talking about one guy was doing – um, land leases for billboards. And, you know, it's just, he had, he's done 16 of them and they're just ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. And so what happens is you start to ask questions, find out what people are doing. And, you know, we don't know everything. And, and so there's lots and lots and lots of ways to do this, lots of ways to raise capital, lots of ways to do real estate deals with really no management even. And, and, um, and, and so that's, that's it. And, and once you're in the, these circles, then you just get wiser and wiser and wiser. Yeah, so look at the cash flow quadrant, E, S, B, and I. I stands for insider. You wanna get to the inside. And when you get there and people trust you, you have a good reputation, there's no advertising. The best deal just goes. Like I said, oh, it's tonight. Tonight I'm gonna go talk to Mark Telbell. We're gonna take a run at this uh, corner. You know, it's a great corner, 32nd yeah. and Camelback. It is a great corner. And so <clears throat> we don't have the money, we don't know what, but we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna take a run at it. But that's how it's done. And, the, and our friend Sal DeCicio, when he took my building from three stories to four stories, what did that do for valuation? So this happens all the time. I, you guys need to understand, like, like if there's a home on a corner and there's a four story office building next to it, you can go four stories. And once you can add another story, of course, it adds the value to the land. So somebody can build something higher. Because I was, I was talking to these two young women who are now, they think they're Donald Trump or something. They bought themselves a single family. They're starting, you know I mean? They're starting. And I said, you see that building there? That's my building. What do you see? They go, and all around that are all these three-story buildings. I go, it's a building. <laughs> I said, this one has four stories. What does that mean? You know, they can't see it, but it's sitting right in front of them. Yep. My friend owned a self storage on Las Vegas Strip that he owned, and um, a casino came to him because they, they could go 40 stories. And so all of a sudden, he's like, he bought this, you know, self storage building that was producing whatever. And and all of a sudden, because they can go forty stories, of course that that self storage is gone. It's ripped yeah. down, and they go <laughs> they go vertical. This happens all over the place. So when you look at the cash flow quadrant, look at Rich Dad Poor Dad, look at Kenny's three books plus this book, you'll start to see things that the average person doesn't see because they're too effing lazy. I mean, I had to look at a hundred properties in nineteen seventy four. You know, it was a lot of time looking at a hundred properties. And then all of a sudden I could see stuff. Yeah. And the other thing is, is a lot of people don't realize is when you put money in a bank or you give money to a, a pension or you give money to a financial planner, they now have a problem because they have to invest it somehow. And so that money is your money, 
Uh, and then they, they need to find people to invest that money. So that's how the, the world works. They're just middlemen to your money. And so that money makes its way to real estate deals. That money makes its way to businesses. And, and so um, why not be on the other end of it? Well, instead of giving somebody the money and then having them look, why don't you figure this out for yourself? Because, and then try to get that money from those same people to do deals. That's how this whole system works. Right. So once again, this is the fourth book in the series of Kenny's books, ABCs of Real Estate, ABCs of Financing, you know, the advanced guide to finance. The third book is Property Management and the fourth book is ABCs of Raising Capital. All are essential. If you're lazy, don't start because it takes a while, right? It does take a while. It's, it's, it's not something you're going to learn. You're going to make some uh, mistakes just like we have. And uh, you'll have a lot of wins. Um, and I tell everybody, just hit, just focus on hitting singles because there's a, there's way more money than there are deals. And if you can see the deals, you'll get the money. Money flows in. Money just flows in on you. So once again, you know, if you don't want to do all this work, then follow Dave Ramsey's advice. Live debt free. Call your house an asset and enjoy life. Hey, Kenny, thanks very much. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> and thank you all for listening. Sarah, final comments on that. Thank you so much, Kenny, for your time and coming in. Because um, you just you just bought your first property, right? Right yeah. on. It's a uh, it's actually two cabins on a lake in northern Indiana. Perfect. Uh, so I'm prepared to make all the mistakes, <laughs> um, but it'll be a great adventure. But it, so far, it's it's been fun and interesting. I am doing all of the maintenance so far myself, the remodel. Yep, good. Um, so I'm learning how to install toilets, sinks how to fix water softeners. I mean, it's a disaster. I mean, this is. That's how we all start. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it's a good experience too. Cause when you have a contractor, now you're going to know what to I can ask. speak the language yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's definitely. very important. So, so yeah, it's, it's fun. It's been a fun ride so far. Good. Yeah. So congratulations, congratulations yeah. on starting. Congrats. That's great That's news. the most important thing Sarah has started. Way yeah. to go. So, like, so thank you all very much. And uh, thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show. <laughs>